there, and if anybody else shows, shows up, we'll just kind of let them bump in. This is going to be, I'm going to explain a few, I'm going to talk for a few minutes, so you can kind of just, you have to sit down or whatever, relax. It's not, I'm not going to do this every class. I do this like on a Monday because I started a new tactical class and I wanted people to kind of understand what it is we're going to do. It's kind of the same thing for Wing Chun because it's, it's different. So, but otherwise, on a normal Monday, we'll just jump right into it. One of the things we hated, I'll tell you, before I get into my intro, one of the things I used to hate about Wing Chun is there's a certain way I taught, because I wasn't as good of a teacher back then. And it would be like, have new people show up, and be like, oh, you're new. I have to catch you up to everybody else in the class, so everybody else in the class, when they see you first, they're like, oh, we're gonna be doing the boring stuff today. You know, but the other, the other cool thing about that, though, that it was actually good in some ways, because as Sean does in his classes, I know, and even Joe does, you can take it, a head student who really knows what they're doing and put them up with a brand new person and it's good because you learn even more as you teach. So I think that's why, that's probably one of the only reasons that I still remember as much Wing Chun as I do because when I stopped training in my Sibu, I came and moved away because uh, I'll tell you, it's funny, I had this conversation, I have this conversation almost every time I talk to my Sibu, but uh, I definitely had one yesterday, he was like, talk about it's too bad you didn't finish your art. And I was like, I was like, I can help you get finished. I was like, I thought we're never finished, see you. And uh, he's, anyways, uh, I told him, well, the reason I had to leave, see you, is because you couldn't provide the same kind of benefits that my wife was gonna provide me if I went with her. So I was like, well, that's true. So anyways, what is Wing Chun? All right, does anybody, Sean's not allowed to answer most of these questions, but I'll let everybody else answer. Does anybody know what Wing Chun means? Like just what the meaning of the name is. Wing Chun basically means beautiful springtime or eternal springtime. I that. Yeah. It's and uh, thing, why do why would you name a fighting system that? So let me tell you why I believe it's named that way. Because in my tradition it was because it was a girl's name who actually was the first student. And there that's are, the whole thing. That, but, that, but there are guys out there, there is other Wing Chun people out there. And they don't believe that that was true. They believe that was just a story and to teach like principles and stuff. But but I believe it was true. And so you guys can do whatever you want, it's fine. But anyways, in the end, what it comes down to, believe it or don't, it does a history of what makes things learnable. Here's why I think, well, one of the reasons I think it's true is because, and not to get into a big heavy, Discussion about this, yeah. yeah. But, but I think it's true because of the way the art is, it's definitely built towards a smaller individual, a weaker individual fighting against a stronger, larger opponent. Why? I studied this first. The first art I picked is not because I did a whole bunch of research on martial arts, but just literally as a teenager, I stumbled into the door of the school. I met my seafood Don Green, and my buddy and I went in there together. I signed up, he didn't, and the rest is history. So that's kind of what happened. Um, but Wing Chun, most people don't know what Wing Chun is, but it actually is this, is this art that Bruce Lee actually made famous. Most of the moves that he does is Wing Chun. Well, in fact, you know, all the moves that he, he does in his fighting system. Um, he then learned some other stuff too. Once he got to America, he learned some, he would get up, he would uh, connect with guys like uh, Chuck Norris and other famous people and be like, yeah, show me that round kick. But up until that point, everything he did was Wing Chun. Um, the problem was um, he didn't have permission from his teacher to teach all the people he wanted to teach and maybe not even to teach at all because it was a lot stricter back then. So anyways, he ended up calling it Jeet Kune Do. A lot more people have heard of Jeet Kune Do. Uh, it's funny, I was just having this discussion with my sequel last night. So, um, but Jeet Kune Do, as he says, very accurately, was like the first crowd Maga. It was like the crowd Maga of Wing Chun and it basically was Let's extrapolate all the fighting aspects of it and self-defense principles, and we'll leave all the rest of the stuff in Wing Chun. And so, basically what Wing Chun consists of, I don't know if you can see this far away, but I'll just explain it to you, is forms for those, and I'm gonna talk Krav Maga to you guys, because most of you know Krav Maga too, so I'm gonna talk Krav Wing Chun at the same time. Forms, which the closest thing that most of you know as a form is the weapon target flow drill of Krav Maga. So it's similar to that, but it's not. All of the forms of Wing Chun are individual forms. You don't do them with a, with a partner. 
but the principles are the same, they're similar in the fact that you're doing it to learn different techniques that are useful than the core of your art. Also in uh, Chinese martial arts, traditionally, it's a great, these would be secrets. So this would be a way to remember secrets without writing them down that somebody could steal. And it would be a way, if you're traveling from one place to another and joining another school, that you could show the teacher and he would be able to recognize what family you came from based on what form you were doing, what level you were at. So forms is part of it, which is not really a big part of Krav Maga, other than, like I said, our one little weapon tar floater. Self-defense, which since I started teaching Krav Maga almost exclusively in the last five years, I haven't taught much Wing Chun other than privately. And, uh, you know, Sean Ivan's still doing Wing Chun, but it's just not, it's just not been on the front page of what we've been doing teaching-wise. Um, we probably won't cover the self much of the self-defense in this class, except for I'm going to show you how the Wing Chun is directly applies to the self-defense you're learning in Krav Maga classes. So one of the reasons we stopped teaching Wing Chun was because like it's kind of like running two of the same programs side by side, you know. And well, here's the Wing Chun knife defense, and here's the Krav Maga knife defense. There's so much stuff to learn. It's not. It's kind of overwhelming. Chi Sao, which basically means a couple different things. It means energy hands. It means sticky hands. And the whole idea, and you guys, have, some of you've heard me say this before, advanced fighting has to do with feeling, not just seeing. In fact, most fighting, seeing is really like, the only thing you're hopefully able to identify with your eyes is the pre-fight, is that the fight is coming and now it's going into action. It's very hard to go, high punch, front kick, me. We've done this drill, in fact, in Krav Maga, one of the demos that our instructor does is he has you identify what he's about to do. It's almost impossible, even if you're a black belt. Um, concepts. So, oh, that was what I was going to say, too. Self-defense and concepts, uh, we've been putting, especially in Sean's classes, but also in my classes, too, we've been putting all the Wing, Wing Chun concepts and the actual techniques and stuff that are in Wing Chun in the forms, we put them in the crowd of guys. You, you just don't know they're there because we're not referencing them. But now, if you do this class, in addition to Krav Maga, you begin to go, oh, that's where that, that's where that comes from, at least for us. Near the man, like for example, vertical sweep, Near didn't learn that from, from Wing Chun necessarily, he learned it from Krav Maga. But if you listen to his bio, he studied Jeet Kune Do, which we just talked about as a student of Wing Chun. So if you look up Krav Maga on Wikipedia, one of the arts, founding arts is uh, Wing Chun. So the thing is though, Krav, Krav Maga is, is very hard to define because the, the Krav Maga I just trained in Israel has a lot more of throwing and grappling and, and the Krav Maga I'm traditionally comfortable with, it has a lot more stand-up and a lot more striking, which is similar to my Wing Chun background. So anyways, the last thing Wing Chun has in it, history and culture. This is why typically, I mean even now, I've been talking for five minutes and I just said this is what Wing Chun is all about. So this is why typically when I used to teach Wing Chun class, it would be two hours long, there would be lots of talking, there would be lots of, you have to learn the names of the moves, you have to learn um, you know, the histories, like Sean and I was talking about, and then like, like the philosophy, and there's a lot of good stuff, which when I came, I was finding people getting bored. You know? Now, not to say that Wing Chun can't be taught like Krav Maga, it definitely can be. My Sifu teaches his Wing Chun a lot more combatively than, than a lot of other Wing Chun schools. So, but anyways, how are we gonna run this class? So this is, now I'm gonna transition to how, how this class is gonna be different than a traditional Wing Chun class. A traditional Wing Chun class, it, it, let's say not a Krav Maga school, but in just a Wing Chun only school, you walk in the door, you meet the teacher, and he's gonna tell you why Wing Chun is, is the best art in the world, the world to learn, and then he's gonna start your program. And you're gonna to have to learn how to stand, proper stance, how to punch, uh, all the different techniques, you have to do tons of stuff. And then, it's, then you're gonna learn a form. At the, if you're at the beginning, you're gonna learn Silatau, which is the first form, and means little ideas or little concepts, small concepts and principles, and we're gonna, learn, we're gonna do some of that tonight. But you never get past that form until, once you finish that whole form, which is a lot longer, you'll find out it's a lot longer than the weapon target flow drill. Once you learn that well, you can, Get permission to go to the next form, which is Chum Q. And that has a movement and it has more power and more a different striking and stuff like that. In total, 
There are six forms. Alright? And even that, there's arguments about, oh, those are six forms, those are not six forms. There's the three core forms, which is Silum Tau, I'm just going to do abbreviations here. Silum Tau, Chung Q, and Bu G. And I might, once I get you guys working, I'll probably write them all out so you guys can, if you want to snap a picture of this before you go today, that would be good. Um, and after those three forms, these three forms form the whole foundation of your Wing Chun. After that, um, there's the wooden dummy, which you can see behind me is dissembled, but it just moved. But the dummy is, is where you really get into a lot of hand-to-hand -hand stuff. And you're learning new patterns that help you be a more enclosed fighter. And then you have the two weapons, which are long pole and butterfly swords. Okay, one more thing about the explanation of the wind jump. Yeah. What an ER. <laughs> but, but source? <laughs> or a period. <laughs> uh, right. There you go, I wrote that one out. Alright, so average black belt in Krav Maga, again, it depends on the Krav Maga school and organization. But in our organization, it's around, I wanted, when I. So, or Wing Chun. What? No, no, Krav Maga. Okay. Average average black belt in Krav Maga is about takes about three years. All right, in Wing Chun, when I first started teaching Wing Chun, it was about ten years. So to, to really get all this curriculum, it's like ten years of training. Um, I right away as soon as I started teaching Wing Chun, I tried to start fast tracking people through it. And Sean can tell you this is the first time he ever trained with me was an instructor training. Right, I, I met you and we, we shook hands. I think you did maybe you did one class. Did you a class? I did two months in uh, in Germany. No, um, but with me. Did and you then do? I did uh, about a year with somebody else, and then I finally found Mark right there on my base, on our base. But like the first time we, we talked, we were chatting at the gate. Yeah. And he says, "Hey, I got a training seminar." Training. And I'm like, "Okay, awesome." And it was like a week long class. I'm like, "That's phenomenal! I can't wait. That's awesome. That's exactly what I want to do." And what's funny is this was like before I even knew about Krav Maga instructor certifications and stuff like that. It turned yeah. out to be an instructor certification. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, so it's like a five-day course. We rolled through all these things. I put them all up on YouTube, a lot of videos. Immediately began to get screamed at by my instructor, like, those are secret, what are you doing? And I was like, all right, I'll pull something down. But uh, anyways, the problem, so again, three years to 10 years, and something I want to just explain about this is you got butterfly swords that probably you'll never carry on the street with you. Okay, a lot of good stuff. You got a long pole, which is like an eight foot to a 13 foot pole. Unless you are uh, one of those guys in France that can pull through the water on the boats. Yeah, you're probably not carrying that around with you every day. So this is, so as awesome as this history, but we don't take it out because it's part of the history. And that's awesome. And you, I'm telling you, everybody I've ever seen training in Wing Chun for long, for three years or better, are very good and can face off against. You can use those, like the long pole. It's cool too. You can use a pole and you find a banister, something yes. like that. Broomstick handle, all those kinds of things. You can wind up using those same principles with that sticks for the butterfly swords. Good kung fu movie to watch about that is Rumble in the Bronx with yep. Jackie Chan. And that was right around the time he started doing Wing Chun, and he, he does that. He literally, Jackie Chan's famous for like turning kung fu weapons into like shopping cart strategy, you know, ladder fighting. But in that movie specifically, he did some Wing Chun stuff with a pool stick, right? Yep. Um, so anyways, so it is rare to keep a student for 10 years. It's very rare. I've taught probably over th over thousand students, I can safely say over thousand students in fifteen years of teaching. I have once maybe three students that are that I even talk to still that are with me after ten years. So that's the problem I saw in it. So we don't always count, you know, kids. We'd always be stuck here in this level, first and second form. We never get to all the good stuff with a lot of the students that I wanted to get to. So that was part of the reason I did start looking at Krav Maga, among other reasons. But. In Krav Maga training, I found that the problem with Krav Maga is because it doesn't have a traditional base, that in itself can be limiting. Even in Israel, I went to Israel and his base, they're awesome. And one of the reasons they're awesome is they have a base foundation of 
Chinese sand show, Kung Fu. And so, the, which is a lot more throws and stuff like that, but they have, it's not just to, how to take a gun away, how to take a knife away, how to, how to break a choke. So there's, some, there's, a, there's a base to it. So my, my purpose in putting this back in, for those who want it, is that it's gonna provide you to go a lot deeper with the Krav Maga than you could just with Krav Maga alone. And everything, because I'm the Krav Maga guy as well as the Wing Chun guy, and so is Sean. The goal, is, you know, we're gonna be able to, we can, we're fluent in both the languages. So it's gonna be a little different than any other Wing Chun program that you would take anywhere else. So with that, I wanna say one more thing about this, two month rotation. So to go to the time thing, instead of doing that here, we're not gonna, my first test in Wing Chun was at nine, almost a year, just like how you're doing. But it wasn't because I waited or I missed the test. It was because my teacher said, no, you're not ready. So I, I had to do that one form for almost a year. I think it was nine months. But here we're not gonna do that. What I would like to do, and I talked to Sean about this probably years ago, but do what's called a rotational curriculum, rotating curriculum. So some things will just build and develop like Chi Sao, the sensitivity training, and the other part of our class is going to be what I call Krav Wing Chun Synthesis, which is basically what Sean's class is already. And pretty much just seeing, once you learn the form, you're going to be like, oh, that's this from the gun, from the long gun thing. That's what this is. So, and practicing the forms, just like practicing the weapon target flow drill, it kind of builds it into you even more. So, um, but two month rotation, I'm going to do on the form. So this way, I'm not really worried if you master this first form in two months. We're just going to move on. So you can still practice on your own outside of the class, um, but then we're gonna just start talking about the second form. Then we're gonna start talking about the third. We're just gonna roll all the way through. So in a year, we've done all the forms. Um, at some point, I will do tests for this, but we're only doing one class a week, so I probably wouldn't even be talking about that at least for, at least for six months. Maybe a year, I don't know. Maybe we'll do one test a year. Is it like a belt? That's what I'm saying. I, I haven't even got that far with it yet because I don't really want to. I don't want to duplicate Krav Maga necessarily. I, I just want what we're already doing with Krav Maga. And because we already have a fast testing program in, in Krav Maga, I'd rather just slow go slow and take. This is like a multi-course meal versus fast food. You know, I I, I can't say Krav Maga is fast food, but sometimes. You know why all Americans eat fast food? Because there's times when you can't sit down and cook a you know, seven course meal, so. And wrist down, I just do this with my wrist. Boom, so it pops in. As soon as I feel it, I pop it down. It should somewhat feel a little bit drastic and a little bit violent to Keith. So as soon as he starts to punch, boom, it pops it out. I sit here in this position for a second, and Keith keeps his hand, his wrist, in contact with mine. Because as soon as I go to punch, he comes up, angle too much, just keep that position into a bong sao or a wing arm. And then once we've felt that we've got that energy dampened or stopped or shock absorbed or whatever you want to call it, boom, it's stopped. Then we just transition right back to this and this. And then when I go to punch, I'm sorry. Go back to here. So now when I go to punch, he pops it down. Now he goes to punch me, boom. Let me just transition back. As soon as I go to punch, boom. He punches, and back. So I go to punch, he jerks it down. He goes to punch, go to the wing arm. I transitioned on you before I told you about. As soon as that energy is dissipated, we go right back to, he, ha he has a hook hand and I have the tonsil or the reverse vertical sweep. So, boom, 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 boom. Three moves. Boom, boom, boom. You can transition. As I'm going to punch, he does the wing arm. Boom. And then you just retract your other arm. Now, back, that energy is dampened. So back to the boom. Right? He punches, I pop it down, he waits for me to do punch, until he feels my punch, wing arm, energy is dampened, we go back to here. He goes to punch, pop it down, boom, boom. That's it. Simple pimple. Try it out.
Do you know that too? You know that one? Why don't Sean? Why don't you work with one and then you work you work with one? Of, yeah. So so that's something. Yeah, that'll make it easier. Okay. Uh, well, both hands start here, and whoever starts the action. So if you're gonna punch me, I do the winner. Then I stop that action. The energy's dampened. 